day we finally get to start on this little empire i believe is the era of furniture that it is according to the legs but it's an empire secretary desk that i bought for 50 dollars for my seven-year-old son I like to do an individual piece of furniture for each of my children. Eventually, I would like to do an entire bedroom's worth so that when they move, when they're adults, they have that to take with them as a personal thing that's theirs and that was designed specifically for them. Anyway, this I bought off of Facebook Marketplace and the damage was definitely not disclosed. I was very specific about asking questions and they answered them um, incorrectly but I didn't know until I had already paid for it and got it home because they loaded it into my trailer for me. So I wasn't able to, they took it straight out of the back of their truck and put it into my trailer. So there was no opportunity for me to check the wobbliness and how much damage there was and how much needed to be fixed. I don't know if it would have changed my mind, $50 is still pretty cheap, but it needs a lot of work. My seven-year-old son is super excited to get started on it with me. But the first process is taking off any moving parts. The hardware is painted onto the drawers, so I'm not sure what I can do with that. I think I could probably maybe get it off, but we'll just start and try. These are actually nothing special and they look like they are caked in like four to five layers of paint, so I'm actually just gonna throw them out. I am all about preservation of history, dude but not flathead screws, no. Like they need to disappear into history. <laughs> they are a pain in my rear end for ever to get out, especially when they've been painted over 15 times. Just no guys, don't paint over hardware. Don't do it. Don't, just say no. Arguably my least favorite part of the job. It has lasted like a hundred years, so it's obviously good quality. And even though I'm not gonna reuse the screws, I'm going to keep them for size reference when I go to replace the screws at the hardware store. Okay, I don't think you need to watch two hours of me trying to get hardware off. It's not about the walls you break it Cause when you stop the world keeps shaking And I don't want to be a part Then I heard it in the morning And then I saw it in the evening And then you said without a warning That you need someone to believe in An old Thomas Jefferson stamp. I'm not sure that it's original, but even if it is, in order to properly put it back together, uh, refinish it, I have to take it apart first, so that's a bummer. It's not love, it's a trap we've fallen, just like the war we fought in. Not love, it's a trap. So in the interest of saving myself a ton of time, I've decided to cease on the whole scraping thing, and I'm just going to use chemical stripper. My favorite type to use is citrus strip. You wanna shake it really well. And then apply it liberally. Screaming out, I'm screaming out. 
You don't let your feelings haunt you. You don't ever get nervous, do you? With all the right cards in your hands. I'm breathing just to feel my body. You're screaming just to say you're sorry. Just did a whole bunch of dry scraping which actually was more productive than the scraping with the citrus strip on it although I think one of the reasons why it was so easy to scrape the paint off with a paint scraper was because of having let some of that citrus strip dry on it so it made it rather brittle now I'm down to sanding before I get to start repairing parts on it it got quite a bit wobbly wobblier with all the that rigorous scraping <laughs> but let's see if we can't make this be little beauty shine so this is where I have stopped for now it's looking like a thousand percent better than what it did but it's gonna need a lot more sanding um, not really sure what I'm gonna do inside my son says he's fine with it the way that it is but I think that's just because he's excited to have his desk ready <laughs> so I have a little bit more sanding to do and then I'm going to be working on the protective coat well no actually I'm gonna have to do some repairs. He said he likes it exactly the way that it is, except for the broken leg. He wants the broken leg fixed. I'm like, mm. all right, that's it for today. See you later. It has been days of sanding. Days. I'm sanded out. There's more sanding that I could do, but I'm not going to. So this is good enough and I am ready to get a coat of stain on it. And let's just see what it looks like so far. A million times better than what it was. It looks, it looks very cranky when it was supposed to heal, but me and mommy this it is very nice looking. Yeah. This, this, this was so dirty. But now it looks like really nice oak wood. I think I'm going to install the drop front before I. So I stripped all of the paint off of them and cleaned them really well. So I'm just going to put the original ones back on. With much gnashing of teeth, we finally got the flathead screws on the drop desk. I made my decision. I do not want the cubby. You don't want the cubby? At the last second, before we were going to do the cubbies, I made my decision. Well, we can always because, do it later. Because guess what? What I got today.
fully stained. It just has to probably sit and dry overnight. And then we can give it a top coat and then we can install. We this. cut a piece of hardboard. Well, I did cut a piece of hardboard as a new backing for the desk since the old one was pretty much trash. How do you like that, Reese? I like it. That looks cool. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. All right, we're back again. And today I am hoping to get the clear coats put on. So plan is to use polycrylic and I'm gonna see about one coat and then possibly two. We'll see how I feel. I'm gonna attempt to roll it with a four inch roller. And this is a really flat rolling pad for very smooth surfaces, so. Well, the nice thing about that was, was that by the time I got back up to the top, uh, it was already dry, so. But using a foam roller really made the polycrylic foamy, so that was kind of weird. Well, we got two layers of polycrylic on it now, and we put on the hardware that we got from Hobby Lobby. So pretty. Like an old brass color. Andrew. And now we're going to put the backing on. It was more than a feeling from the floor. All we need is to install the hinges over here or the arms. And I purchased them off of Etsy, but they did not come with screws. So we're about to head to the hardware store to buy some screws for the drop, no, I missed, I missed. the drop lid, the stays. That's what they're called. We'll be back in a little bit. Bye. All right, trip to Home Depot. And I ended up with these machine screws. We shall see if I can make them work. Okay, that was the near as hard as I thought it was gonna be, so I'm really grateful for that. And this pack had just enough screws, and they are machine screws, half inch. They're number six. I'm just using this to pre-drill the holes for the bottom part, and I'm using a hole that was already there for the top part. So these were $1.28 for all six of them. And I got these stays on Etsy. These are brass stays. And it was a pair of them for like $6.28. So it's a really good deal. There you have it. Fully functioning. Well guys, that's it for now. It's a beautiful transformation. I love it. I cannot believe that I was actually able to stain it. And here's the thing I wanna say. I am not a professional antique restorer. I do not use perfect technique or I don't know everything. I, I don't know a lot of things, but I know the basics and I am not seeking perfection at all when I am redoing furniture. In fact, I have grown to embrace the flaws in antiques in that most people when they find like veneer chips or missing pieces or stuff like that, they would just opt to paint it. And maybe 10 years ago, I probably would have done the same thing. But as I have grown older and kind of embraced the antique and vintage lifestyle, I have really learned to embrace the flaws. And by that, I mean, I would rather live with something that is flawed and even missing veneer. I would rather just fix what I can. Like there's still paint 
in some of the wood grain and I'm I'm okay with that. I think it looks a million times better than if I would have slapped some paint back on it and just tried to hide it all. I mean, this is at least 80 years old. It might be all the way up to 100 years old. So at a certain point, you just need to, I think you just need to love the age of the, of the piece of furniture. Anyway, that to say, when you are redoing a piece of furniture, it does not have to be perfect. I personally am not trying to make it look new. I don't want it to look new. You cannot buy this in a store anymore. They don't make this kind of furniture anymore. They definitely don't make it with this kind of craftsmanship that it used to be made. But I'm hoping that I can persuade and change some people's minds by showing my process and me loving on imperfect pieces of furniture and antiques and kind of embracing their flaws. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching all the way through. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this content. Thanks again, friends. I will talk to you later. Bye.